precisa Hello everybody, welcome to the introduction to React Hooks. React Hooks is a very exciting feature of React uh, that changes many things of the way we think about our state and the way we think about our components. Uh, React Hooks basically lets you have state in functional components. That's, that's basically it. It takes a functional component and it puts state into it. Uh, this means that if we make an app only with React hooks, we will never ever have to write any class component with the method component did mount, render, component will mount, component will receive props, blah, 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 nah, none of that. Everything just will become one single uh, function. Every, every component will just be one function. And this is something super cool because it's a turn into the functional programming style. And I really like that. Um, there is like object-oriented programming, with classes and shit, and the other one is functional style, functional programming, which is only functions. Um, and it makes the code, I think, look better and more easy to think about. Um, the history of hooks started with something called Recompose. Recompose is a library that I used once in my life. I really used it once because I wanted to make a course about it because the idea is very similar to hooks, like this. So it makes functional com uh, functional components and it gives them state. So look at this, like this, it, it, it works like this. Okay, and it's, it's, it was a cool thing, it was a cool thing. The thing is that the person that made this, um, the person that made this library was acquired by the React team because I guess they liked the idea. So he stopped uh, supporting this um, library, October, 25, 2018, and he moved to the React team, and then they released hooks. Um, so basically it's recompose plus some more input from the React team, and that is hooks, all right? So that's the story behind hooks. It came from a recompose. Now with hooks, the stuff looks more easier, and I'm about to show you and give you an example of how, uh, what is before and after hooks. So here I have a simple create React app application, the React app application is running here. I just created it with create React app. And what I want to do is just make a simple example, a simple example, yes, of um, what we have right now. If you want to manage a state, what we have to do right now. So for example, here, I'm going to do count, all right? And then I'm going to pass this count. Whoops. I'm going to pass this count into the render to just to show the count, this state. Whoa, all right. And here I will just do count, okay? And we're all happy together, look at this, perfecto. All right, now I wanna increment the count, so I will make a function called increment, all right? And here I will just say this set state, and I'm gonna give a function, I'm gonna get the current state, all right? And I'm gonna return the count current state plus one, all right? So here, let's open up a fragment, okay? And here, let's make a button, increment. And oh, you know what's better? Just let's do modify n. And we set the state to count to n, whatever, okay? And this thing will be on click, and it'll be a function that we call modify, and it will be count plus one, all right? So that will be what our button will do. So we have a modify function here that sets the state to whatever we give it. And in this case, we're gonna say button on click, and we're gonna pass a function, modify count plus one. Okay, let's look at that. Fucking hell. This, that, modify. All right, bravo. So now it says increment is one, perfect. Okay, so as you can see, we do a lot of things here. First, we need a class component. Second, we need the state uh, to define the state. Third, we need to define it. Then we need to pass it and blah, blah, blah. But this is a class component. Now, what would happen if you wanted to do this on React hooks? How can we make this look better, first of all? And second of all, how can we make this functional? So we only stay with functions instead of with classes. So we don't have to do any of the this, this bullshit. Uh, very simple with React hooks. What we're going to do is create a const app component, for example, right? And here, what we're going to do is import from React use state. 
method, right? Use state. Use state um, is basically how we hook into the React state, all right? And it's very simple actually to use. We're gonna say const and we're gonna open this bad boy here, okay? And trust me, this will make sense later. We're gonna do count and here set count, okay? And then we're gonna say use state and we're gonna say the default value zero. Hang on there. Promise you this will be worth it. And then we're going to return and we can return a fragment like before, but not return like this, like this, all right? And we can return a fragment. Whoa, all right? And here we're gonna do count. And here what we're going to do is we're going to say um, I don't know, fucking hell, button. Yep, on click function. We're going to say set count, and we want to set the count to, let's say, count plus one. And then here, increment. All right? So let's see, this is it. Now this should work. Let's see. Look at that. Beautiful. It fucking works. Look at the big difference. It's crazy. Look at that. It's insane how different it is. Now, let's explain what's happening here. It's very, very simple. Use state is giving you two things. One thing, a value. And second thing, how to modify that value. That's it. Okay, now we are working with this array thing because what user state gives you is an array. Okay, and basically, this is the way of doing that the first element of the array is going to be named count, and the second name could be named set count. Okay, you just need to remember this user state will return an array, and the first, first element of the array is a value that starts with zero. And the second element of that array is set count. So this could be named potato, potato, potato. And this could be named kimchi, kimchi. All right. Why did I do that kimchi like that? And it will still work. Look at that. Okay. It's just that the user state returns an array. And this is the way that we say, okay, the first element of the array should be called count and the second should be called set count. But that is just a convention. You don't have to go with that name if you don't want to, okay? This is how we see it is. User state is hooking into the underlying state management of React. So in this case, it's a little bit of magic because on the class component, we did literally everything. We did this sit state, state equals n, like we did everything. In this case, we don't do that much. It's done for us. So there is a little bit of black magic behind this that we don't touch. With the class component, it was very explicit, everything that was happening, how to control the state. Here, it's not so much, all right? It's more magical, but I kind of like it more, all right? So we go back to this set count. So this means that we have to, we can also do uh, decrement, decrement, I don't know if that's the word, decrement minus one. All right, and plus and minus. And it fucking works. And we didn't have to make another function. We didn't have to, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's just so much better. Like look at this compared to the class contain. okay? Now, as I know, there's more magic behind this, but then again, it's not so bad. Now what happens if, for example, I have an input. Let's say I have an input here. Um, let's say that this input is a placeholder. All right, and I will do email. Now I need a value for this input. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say const, and this will be email, for example, and this will be set email, I don't know. Okay, and here I'm gonna say use a state, and the default value of email is going to be empty. Okay, done. So now I have a value for email, value, email. Perfecto. Let's look at this, and I have email here. Can I, can I modify it? I cannot modify it. There is no change function yet, but I do have a set email. So what happens if I just create a function here, another function inside, and I will be uh, update email, for example. All right, this function will come with, to me with an event, and I am going to just say, um, let's get the value from that event. So I'm gonna say target value from the event, and then I just say set email to that value. Okay, and then all I have to do at the end is do uh, on change update email, all right? And then update email is just a function and update email would use set email to set the value of email, let's see. And now it fucking works. Look at this, so much shorter, all this logic than doing set state and define the state and then doing render and then doing return and all that, look at that, very, very easy. This is how hooks works. This is why people like it. This is what I like. It makes everything more functional. And yes, you could say that it's kind of annoying to have to make the whole, um, every kind, every, you know, every piece of the state separate. Like for example, count is a different user state and email is user state. Yes, that could be kind of annoying, but also maybe you could put a big state object here and you can make a little bit of a reducer. You can use your imagination. Now hooks is not, a, is not alone. Hooks also comes with something called use effect. Where are you? here there is use hooks use state sorry and the other one is use effect and use effect 
is the equivalent to component did mount and component did update, which usually we use when we want to request data from the APIs and whatever. The problem is that I don't have enough time on this video. And also I have a very lovely React.js subscription that I want you to take a look at because on this beautiful React subscription, we build this beautiful movie application. This one is completely with class components with the old version of React. And what we're going to do on that React subscription is to turn all these into React hooks. You're going to learn how to handle hooks, how to handle effects, what is the difference, how to use them, when to use them, how to create your own hooks, like a higher order hook. So it's a very exciting thing and I'm recording it already. It'll be ready pretty soon on the React subscription. So check it out because it's very, very sexy. If you don't want to buy the React subscription, just look at the documentations because it's an amazing piece of work where you can still learn about React use state and use hooks. That's it. Thank you for watching. I hope that you like hooks. Um, it's a very exciting thing for me. I really like it. It makes the code look so much better. I hope I have always been a fan of um, functional programming. Don't forget to subscribe, share this to all, to all your React friends. Maybe this will change their lives and will make them better and happier today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, go in kimchi. I'm back in Korea. See you all soon.